So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me thank UNDU and CM Vietnam for inviting me to have presentations at uh, this workshop uh, conference. So for my presentations, um, I will talk about the three topics. First is the link between economic trans uh, transformation, inclusive growth, and gender equality. And the second is the overview of gender issues in Vietnam when we talk about the economic transformation and inclusive growth model in Vietnam now. And the third one is some uh, policy recommendations. Um, yes. First, link between economic transition and economic growth and gender equality. Let me uh, start with three questions that, is, that are very frequent to be asked at any conference when we talk about the gender equality and economic development. The first is how economic development and growth affect gender equality. Actually, uh, many uh, international uh, empirical study indicated that um, economic development bring higher income and also better services for the people. And of course, it also affects the good uh, uh, positive impact on the gender, reduced gender equality and education employment. Now, take one example in Vietnam. For example, we now almost uh, gender equality in education as a primary. Uh, secondary and almost higher level, uh, at the uh, upper higher school, almost close at the gender gap. Um, and also even in some colleges, now we have also more, degree, more women and men in the education levels. And also employment, when we see the, the data, so we see that Vietnam is one of the countries that have very high uh, uh, ratio of the women's employment and labor force. Uh, that is one hand. On the other hand, how it's, it's not mean that economic development necessarily lead to the gender uh, gender equalities. I also uh, I um, I can show also one example from Vietnam. Um, actually, it's now one of the gender gender issues pressing of gender issues in Vietnam is an imbalance ratio ratio sex ratio at birth. Um, actually, in the study also indicate that. Um, the, this very high ratio of unbalanced ratio at birth among rich family and urban areas, not in the poor and rural areas. That is a story about the technology, also economic development, who can access the technology, who had income and also the money to use the technology, to, like a sec, um, selected abortion, abortions. So it led to the very, very gap in the ratio at birth of Vietnam between the boy and um, boy and girls and boy. And uh, the, second, uh, the second question, how gender equality impact on economic growth? So there is more strong evidence on the impact of gender inequality uh, can hamper the economic growth. Um, there is study uh, show that um, um, more gender equality, for example, it is a high high ratio of fert, uh, fert, uh, fertilities, and also linked to the um, linked to the lower rate of the saving, and also lower rate of the children going to school. So it's a, we we can see it's from the short term and long term effects. So so gender equality is very uh, have a positive impact on econ economic growth, even if we see at the like human resource development on, um, and also the education investment in the girls and boys difference um, in some country Asians like Vietnam. And the third question is, is growth gender exclusive? Actually, it's now, um, it's not only gender, but inclusive in general, in ethnic minority issues also in Vietnam. Um, and we think that even now we, um, in Vietnam, Ethnic, ethnic minority account only 14% of the population, but they are account for more than 50% of the, of the poor. So that means when we say about the growth, that inclusive the gender, women, ethnic minority, and in my, in my, uh, in migrants may include it, may be excluded from that uh, process. Uh, and also here, if the women very unpaid work burdens and limited access to resources and social norms, uh, to attach them to the household and, and family responsibility. And this own concern to women to, to capture the, the, the well-paid and high-paying sectors in Vietnam. And also, um, when it's also we, are, we, we are now talking about the Vietnam economic transition, and we see that 
The status can be the low, medium income status of Vietnam and Vietnam on track to meet all nearly all uh, MDG's um, targets. However, the problem is, is um, remaining is persistent po poverty, increasing equality, and also it's at this time also speed of poverty reductions. Uh, economic growth rate has slow and increase the risk of falling back to poverty for marginal populations, as I said, the women, ethnic minority, and migrants. And also, um, low middle income status of Vietnam has been driven a lot by the performance of the export front. And also, it is the cheap labor of the women in the industry zone, and uh, also women involved in the subsistence agriculture, limited job skill, and physical and social isolation. Uh, isolation. So that means that even though we have achieved a quite good um, a number of uh, indicator on economic growth, but remaining the social and gender equality issues. And the challenge is now when we talk about the higher value added activity for continuing for continuing growth and also increased competitiveness. So that means that the women is face a lot of challenges and difficulties when they involved in that profess. How to involve in the, in the higher value at, uh, added job? Uh, how to involve in the higher paying sector? That is a challenge for the women. Um, and the second, um, the second topics I am talking now about the overview of gender issue in the economic transformation in growth growth in Vietnam. Some achievement. Um, you may know that Vietnam has achieved remarkable progress on gender equality compared to the other country who, uh, that have similar economic levels. Um, we have uh, quite progressed gender equality in education, as I said already, almost closed uh, the, the gender gap at the primary and secondary schools. And also, um, um, gender equality outcome in house, labor force, and politi political participation in Vietnam. Um, labor force, Vietnam is now the women of involved in the labor force of almost 75%. Um, it's very, one of the countries is high in the, uh, in the, in the regions. And political participation in Vietnam now also quite high compared to the region. 24% of the women is the National Assembly members. Uh, and also we have legal framework for gender equality. This can see very comprehensive. We have gender equality law. It already passed um, six years ago. National strategy on gender equality, uh, gender mentioning, and legislation as one requirement of the own law when to be passed as the National Assembly. But the challenge is also a lot. Um, gender equality, education, even we have a lot of progress on gender equality and creation. But gender gap here, here is related to the ethnic minorities. It's very big gap between the ethnic minority and majority in, in terms of education. Gender segmentation of the labor market. Uh, of course, when we talk about the economy, the labor market is very critical uh, element. And women more um, representative in informal employment and per work, low wage and unsafe working condition and uh, fewer benefit of the safety net. Because, um, because they, they are involved mostly in the informal sector. So that is a sector is not governed by the labor code. Uh, so they are less, of course, protectives. Um, gender gaps in vocational training and technical education. Uh, it's very important for Vietnam now if we talk about the, how to to innovate economic model if without any uh, high qualification and, and technical skill. And here's a low percentage of the women um, who have is a vocation training. A short-term training, only uh, seven weeks or seven months, is very different from the men he, who can on who, who can join like um, uh, high school uh, for the vocational training. And also here, uh, here is a gender stereotype on vocational training. Um, women involve very traditional, uh, traditional job like uh, um, sewing, uh, textile, garment. And actually, it's very conscious for the women to involve the new job like uh, uh, energy, ICT, um, infrastructures. So that is a very new, uh, relevant job uh, and very important for the Vietnam continuing growth. But it's conscious for the women to involve in because of gender stereotypes. Uh, informal sector is not governed by the labor court, uh, and so lay, uh, unpaid work, 
Actually, it's Vietnamese women very burdened with unpaid work. They do both uh, paid work and unpaid work. And limited sharing uh, from the husband to, to the wife in the household cause. Uh, limited integration of gender-specific concern in current economic policy. So we come back to this later with uh, our uh, recommendation on the economic policy. As uh, the challenges, uh, gender relation is influenced very much by traditional Confucian doctrine. So Vietnam is one of the Asian countries, like other, maybe I think also China, and also Korea is some country influenced very much by the Confucian. Uh, while the, the, the patriarchy behavior is still very wrong, even now, um, even we have a lot of like uh, economic uh, outcome, and a social trends, but gender stereotypes and also patriarchy behavior is very strong in, in the traditional family. So it's the women in fear of state in the family. For example, even we have the land law, um, and the, uh, this law uh, um, stipulates both men and women have their name on certificate of the using of the, of the, of the land, but actually traditionally on that certificate almost so far now, 70% um, still on men. And also some preference um, ideology is very, uh, very strong uh, until now in Vietnam. And also men reluctant to share household family responsibility. So all these stereotypes, burden of the women also impact on their participation in economic activities. Um, now I come back to the last um, point, the policy recommendations. The first, um, we need that, that is very important to have the integration gender equality into implementation of economic, economic policy at all levels. Uh, in my personal view, so far now economic policy so in Vietnam is very separate from the social. If we don't integrate or we don't concern about the gender equality in the economic policy, we are not sure that gender equality will be uh, to be achieved. Um, even we talk about the financial um, policy, we talk about the monetary policy, but actually how is it impact on men and women? And also it's not, it's clear cut. Um, and we, have, we don't have enough like, evidence also study on that. Even in other countries, they have very good study on how this the policy financial crisis uh, impact on the women, different from the women and men. And the second one is a social protection security policy need to be gender responsive. Um, recently, uh, UN Women Vietnam and also ministries of labor, of, uh, labor, um, labor and social affairs in Vietnam conducted on the social protection policy in Vietnam from gender perspective. And you see that even we have number a good policy on social protection, but it not it doesn't mean that. So we mean um, equally benefit from this policy. If we are not concerned about the gender, about the women issues, on the, the, the challenges is facing by the women uh, in order to uh, benefit from that program. And the third one is uh, promoting um, intensive for the women to join integrated uh, economic deeply. Actually now, um, women, women uh, Vietnamese women um, account for um, almost nearly half of labor force in Vietnam, but it very segregated in some sector and is a uh, unskilled work. That's why in order to promote more the women, we have a lot of initiative for the women to enjoy as a sector, non-traditional sector like a technology, ICT, energy, and infrastructure. So I think that is a challenge when we talk about the gender story, um, about the women, because in Vietnam, it's very common to talk about the women, um, like uh, ability, or um, how is it women um, suitabilities to that shop, uh, to that job or not? That is question of stereotypes. Um, engaging the private sector for gender responsive enterprise development. Actually, the private sector is new sector in Vietnam, and I, I. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not sure, and I don't know where the private any forum or conference about uh, on private studies they discuss about the social, about the gender equality or not. Um, actually, it's now until now we 
talk not more about the gender equality in public sector, but private sector is still out of that sphere. So I think that in the next years is very important because women now are more involved in small and medium enterprise, that is private sector. And how the private sector need to be respond for the social uh, issue and also gender equality. Uh, formalizations uh, of informal job and employment, we could uh, enable a process toward protection of the vulnerable groups. Uh, because uh, we, as I said, we mean um, a car for majority in the informal sector. That is uh, unsafe working conditions and a low pitch and also less protected by the law. So how we can formalization of this sector, that is the best way to protect the women and also ethnic minority in the poor. And the last one in review and building a national database system on women and men in all fields of economic training, education, and social security. Because we lack data, we lack sex disaggregated data on men and women in all fields. And they say that because we have no discrimination to men and women in Vietnam. But actually, if we have the data, we can see very different between men and women in that in own sector. Um, so that is the last boy of my presentation, so thank you very much for attention.